Chess friends, how are you? Today, I have a very exciting chess match that was recently played between Torch and me in the Computer Chess Championship events, this game is very authentic and surprising because Torch played a new opening against me, so let's get started without wasting any time, I started the game with e4, we have e5 knight to f3, attacking the pawn, black could go with knight c6, knight f6 or bishop c5 or he can choose the d6 move, but he decided to go with f5, initiating the Latvian gambit. In this central structure, some of you might be tempted to capture the pawn on f5, which looks very natural, but black can strike by playing e4, forcing your knight to move, from here, black should go with knight f6, however, if black ever dares to play d6 to kick out the knight and then open up the bishop line, white can strike immediately by playing queen h5 check, with the invasion of the queen to f7, Black must block the attack by playing g6, here, white can play the cunning move, not knight takes g6. But f takes g6, attacking the pawn with the discovered attack, or, the stronger move you have is to play g7, black's position will be busted and devastated, this chess trap is often used by many chess masters, but in this position, as I mentioned, instead of playing d6, black can respond with knight f6, supporting the pawn on e4, after knight c3, d5 will come to stabilize the structure, then white can play the incredible move, g4, initiating the kingside attack with g5, black can even respond with d4. Counterattacking white. But this did not happen in the game. With the queen d5 can ruin your position, the game would continue like this if I dared to capture the pawn on f5. So in this position, instead of that, I decided to go with knight takes e5, initiating bishop c4 and queen to h5 to threaten black's position completely in these weak light squares, this is why torch decided to go with queen to f6, attacking my knight, in the previous day, I lost against torch, and this is the game where I can take revenge on him, so I go with d4, dominating the center, he tried to kick out my knight and open up the bishop, after my knight moved, he captured the pawn. Providing an open diagonal for the bishop, with queen g6, it will pressurize the pawn, and by playing knight f6 and castling, it will open the f-file for black's use, this is why I decided to go with knight e3, defensively protecting the g4 square and also the g2 pawn, that's my strategy. Torch decided to play with more flexibility, c6 trying to protect the d5 and b5 squares, he has natural looking moves on these squares, and friends, if you are enjoying my game, don't forget to like my content because these contents are very intellectual, and I have to work very hard on them. Anyway, we have bishop c4, with the idea of castling and pushing the pawn to f3 to open up the f-file, this is my strategy in the middle game, also, he plays d5 to build a strong pawn chain on the queen side from the center, a couple of moves later, I invade black's structure by playing c4, attacking the d5 pawn with three pieces, you can see that this position is very difficult for black to handle, but torch is the number two chess engine in the world, which is why he responded with queen g6. At this juncture, some of you might even be tempted to capture the pawn on c4, however, after I capture the pawn, it will put pressure on the bishop, and the bishop has no retreating square except one, as the bishop moves back to c7, I can castle, and you can see that my bishop is controlling the diagonal, my knight is creating a vulnerable situation in the central squares, even rook e1 can come to ruin your position, black's kingside, as it is located in the middle of the board, will be completely burdened. This is why, at this juncture, when the bishop is under attack, some may think of playing knight e7, then I can respond with queen h5 check, as the knight blocks, the bishop can come to g5 to ruin your queen's position, you can see that your position is just completely weakened and destructive, as the bishop line will be opened, after a few moves, when the bishop goes to e7 to give some space for the queen, my knight can join on e5. Dominating and sieging the diagonal leaves the queen out to f5, followed by bishop f7 check, after the king moves, I can initiate a heavy attack by playing knight takes g6 check, the pawn cannot capture because the rook will be hanging, also, if you capture my bishop, I will capture your rook with a check, creating a discovered check, this position is completely destructive for you, and I will win the game very quickly. So, 
Let me inspire you by share a beautiful quote. Do not let the behavior of others destroy your inner peace. Returning to the position, we saw that d takes c4 is not possible, which is why Torch played the best move, queen g6, although the pawn on d5 is targeted by many pieces, black's main idea is to bring out the knight and castle to open the file for the rook, it also puts pressure on the g2 pawn, which is only guarded by the knight on e3, after a couple of moves, when I capture the pawn on d5, it is well protected by my three pieces, many of you might be tempted to capture the pawn on d5. Let me show you the variation, then I can play the stunning move, which will make you stumble, knight to b5, attacking the bishop. The bishop has literally no retreating square, as the bishop moves to f4, knight takes d5 will ruin your position as it threatens to come into c7. After capture and recapture happen on the board, you can see that knight to c7 is a big threat after I capture your bishop on f4, even if you dare to capture my bishop, I can easily recapture it, and my queen will seize this file with the bishop attacked by the queen, the light square bishop is controlling many crucial squares, the king is located in the center of the board, and this position will be just over for you. Returning to the position, we discovered that still, you cannot capture the pawn on d5, this unfolds my strategy and tactics in the middle game. This is why Torch played a very surprising move, short side castle. Nobody on earth would think of a move like Torch, it exposes the black king completely because I can easily capture the pawn, forcing the king to move, and I can gain two pawns. But you know what, Torch's bishop pair is very strong to launch an attack on the king side along with the rook, it puts pressure on the pawn on g2, and black will get significant compensation in the game, this is why, in this position, I decided not to capture the pawn on c6, instead, I went with h4 to initiate an attack on the h-file, because the pawn on c6 is also hanging with the king check, he played h5 himself, after castling and his king moving back. I played knight c4 to attack the bishop, at this juncture, many of you, like 2000 rated players, might think of moving the bishop back to the c7 square, but you know what, your decision will be very wrong after I play pawn to d6, this pawn is just two steps away from becoming a queen, so, after bishop e6, I can play the powerful and cunning move knight e5, directly attacking the queen, this move puts pressure on black's kingside along with the bishop diagonal, attacking the pawn on h5, which is protected by the knight, additionally, I can remove the knight by playing bishop h5, eliminating it. This position will be completely in my favor, with the passed pawn on d6, which can be very destructive for black's position. Returning to the position, instead of moving back the bishop, Torch played the more authentic move knight to g4, this move is very cool and reliable, simultaneously protecting the bishop and putting pressure on the f2 pawn with two pieces, this is why, after my bishop moves, his bishop comes to h2, forcing my king to move, and he picks up the pawn on f2, knight takes f2 is not possible because I can capture his bishop, even though he can capture my queen on d1. I can easily recapture with the rook and the knight on d1 with a check. So in this position, he decided to capture the pawn on f2 with his rook, from there, I cannot capture back the rook because knight f2 can ruin my queen and king's defense, this is why, after the queen moves, rook captures and recaptures happen on the board, at this point. Some of you chess players might still think of capturing the pawn on d5, but it is a completely garbage move, as I can play knight e5, attacking the knight and the queen simultaneously, your queen cannot move back because I can capture your knight on g4 and then your bishop on h2. You will lose your material, so in this position, if you even dare to capture my knight, I can give you a check on f8, as the king moves, bishop takes d5 will come, instead of capturing the knight on e5, putting pressure on the g8 square to checkmate the black king, additionally, my bishop can attack the pawn on e4 to ruin, and disrupt your king and queen's position on this diagonal, making it an authentic and reasonable move, your position will be just over. Going back to the position, instead of capturing the pawn, torch, as the number 2 chess engine in the world, decided to go with knight to d7 to protect the square from queen invasion, so I give him a bishop exchange offer on f4, 
which he accepts after knight f6 to support the pawn on e4, the e-pawn has the potential to promote in the near future. The knight can come to f2 with a check, and in the future, the bishop can arrive at b7 to attack the pawn on g2, there are potential chances for black's pieces. So I try to defend with rook f1 and my queen goes to c7. Maybe I want to push my pawn on d5 if I get the opportunity, at the present moment, you cannot capture my pawn on d5 because my knight can arrive at d5, providing an open file and space for the rook, after the bishop moves and I capture the pawn, we have rook to f8 for a combat with my rook on f1, I play queen before, attacking the black rook. As the rook moves I capture the pawn, and after a couple of moves, it attacks the pawn on a7, but Torch ignored that and played e3 to open up the diagonal for the bishop and the knight invasion on f2, where another knight can easily come to g4, but I ignored all those threats and strategies because I am the number one chess engine in the world, nobody can defeat me without my permission, I ignored all the threats and played knight to d6, this is a very bold move. Of course, you can give me a check on f2 by playing knight f2, then knight g4, but you know what, your position is just as weak as your strategy because I can play knight f7, forking the king and queen simultaneously, and it will be a losing position for you, noticing that knight f7 check may come on the board and the rook is also under attack, he decided to play more reasonably and authentically with king to g6, this move is very strategic and bold, don't underestimate queen takes g6 because some of you, like Alexander the Great, might be tempted to capture the rook on c8, but it is completely garbage as black can respond with knight f2 check. Even if you dare to capture the knight, black can recapture it with the pawn, threatening to promote to a queen. How can you stop it? Even bishop c4 doesn't work because queen takes g2 will checkmate you. In this position, even if you dare to move the king right away, queen takes g2 still comes and ruins your position completely, so, in this position, we see that queen takes g6 is preparing for the checkmate on the g2 square by the knight's invasion on f2, this is why I decided to play queen f5, as it is the only move to safeguard the position by exchanging the queens, your rook is still under attack, so after the rook moves to b8, it puts pressure on the bishop and prepares to push the e pawn. This is why I went with kg1 to stop the pawn promotion, a couple of moves later, we have rook b8 attacking these pieces, after a few moves, I play d5 because the pawn is very close to promotion, and black's pawn is only two steps away from promotion, let's see who wins the cold war, like in the 1950 cold war between the United States and Russia. After the bishop moves and my knight reaches the e2 square, it becomes evident that it wants to go to a5 to disrupt your structure, a couple of moves later, knight b7 attacks the rook, but he counterattacks with knight to g8, as the rook maneuver happens on the board, we have d6 followed by knight g3 and rook c3 to put pressure on the pawn on e3, to safeguard the pawn, black has only one way, knight to g4, but this is a complete rubbish move as I can play rook c7, putting pressure on the bishop. Even knight f6 can't protect the bishop because knight c5 will put pressure on it, and as the bishop moves, I can easily capture it, after recapture, king f1 will come to stop the pawn promotion because my pawn will promote first, so after d7 happens on the board, followed by f4 and knight to e6 attacking the rook and threatening to promote the pawn on d8, it is completely winning for me, I will win the game by capturing your material. So, let me make a wonderful quote for you. Just remember, you can do anything you set your mind to, but it takes action, perseverance and facing your fears. Returning to the position, we see that knight to g4 is not viable to protect the pawn, which is why after rook c8, sacrificing the pawn on e3, we have a check, and the knight comes to g4. A couple of moves later, we have rook d3 to energize the d6 pawn, after a few more moves. We have knight to c5, followed by bishop g4 and d7, king to f2, and rook takes a7. As the bishop moves back to b5 to attack the pawn, I respond with a4, as the rook checks on the board, black immediately captures the pawn on d7 with his bishop, you can see that the bishop is under attack, but this bishop sacrifice is very strategic and tactical, 
a masterful play by Torch, as he is a magician of chess tactics, you cannot capture the bishop, because knight to f5 check will come, and if you dare to play king h3, then rook h1 will be a checkmate. In the previous variation, if you ever dare to play king h2, then knight e5 will come with a brave attack, invading g4 and completely disrupting your king's position, there is a potential chance that the game might end in a draw, so, instead of capturing the bishop, I capture the knight on f7, as the knight check happens on f5, bishop c6 follows, and you can see that both sides have equal materials, however, I have two connected passed pawns. This game is completely winning for me, after the bishop exchanges on e4, we have rook f1, a couple of moves later, we have king g8, knight to e7 check, and the king is disrupted, the king cannot go to these squares because of knight g6, I will win your rook, so after the king moves out, I pick up your rook very easily, a couple of moves later, I push my pawns on the a and b files, leading to checkmate with knight f3. What a beautiful game! I hope you enjoyed it very much, if so, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel, wishing you all the best, bye bye, see you.